Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm super excited to have you. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're checking in from. Welcome to the Sit Red Podcast, where we help you uh, uh, win at life. And today I have a very special guest, guys. You're going to be hearing it. Um, so just so you know, uh, uh, Miss Cruz, Look, man, we saw your TED Talk. We saw you on Shark Tank. What the heck is going on, man? You've been all over the place, man. Can you let the people know who you are and what you do? Of course. So I'm Cameron Cruz. I'm one of the co-founders of Our Riveter, and we are a handbag company on a mission. So we started about 13 years ago in the garage and made it all the way to Shark Tank in 2016. But we basically, our entire premise is that we want to empower and provide military spouses with income opportunities that they can take with them no matter where the military takes us. Mm -hmm. And that they have something that they can call their own. Because as we know, as military spouses moving across the country every three years on average, you know, we have to leave a lot of stuff behind. So we we just didn't want military spouses to have to do that. And, you know, we've been grinding. We started with just every the two of us on our garage. garage. You know, and uh, we we just made, you know, one bag, one bag at a time. Um, and then ultimately we make thousands of bags, you know, hundreds of bags a week now. And like you said, we've we've had the pleasure of being on Shark Tank. We uh, that's insane. We with Cuban, you know, so it's been a wild ride. So so I have a couple of things to unpack. And then so so here's how here's going to be the pace real quick. So, you know how we get down. OK, so um, so I served in the United States uh, Marine Corps from 1996 to 2016. And uh, one of the biggest things that I saw is that my sister, uh, her husband was a pilot. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, she had a graduate degree from a prestigious college. And she was out of work for eight years because they were in that deployment rotation. And I saw her not be able to get a, a, a job for more than $40,000 because of lack of work from that time. So, so one of the biggest things that it really, really, uh, you know, and she went through depression going through that situation and I, it really made me realize how important this was. So I was, you know, I was looking up, you know, impactful, uh, entrepreneurs and military spouses. And then I saw your TED talk. Now I have a couple of questions for you. Were you nervous going on the TED talk? Honestly, you got to keep it real. Cause we got to keep it real on the show. You know, I wasn't nervous, but wow. that's only because I had spent like so much time preparing. I, I would drive around, I, I kid you not, I drove around in my car for probably <laughs> two days straight saying mm -hmm. my TED talk and listening back. So like I would just talk to myself over and over again. And um, I had that thing down. So like preparation was everything. But I, I, at that moment, you know, you step on the stage and you're like, holy crap, is this real? So there was a moment of like out of body experience for sure. But I had done so much preparing, I was ready. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through like uh, your history, if you don't mind. I'm gonna ask you a couple of personal questions. Yeah. Where Where were you born? Like, what what uh, Where were you uh, born? I was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, ATL, yeah. shout it! Look, guess what? <laughs> guess where I'm from? Where? Atlanta. What part? Uh, uh, okay, so I started in, um, we started in Lithonia and then we migrated over to uh, uh, Powder Springs. Okay, so I'm, I was, I'm, perfect. I was in Tucker, so. Oh, you know. Tucker, Tucker, Georgia. I want to tell you down there, I want to tell you they got a little bit of country swing down there. And I would tell you, if you want the best ribs, you're going to have a really good time in Tucker, Georgia. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's, I, I love it. You know, my parents are still there. We still got family there. So it's, got a special place in my heart. Okay. So, and, and then now, so, so let's, let's fast forward. Did you, so you're from Tucker, Georgia. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you always know that you were going to be an entrepreneur is what I wanted to ask no. you also. Heck no. Can I say heck no? Like that was absolutely not in the, not in the plan at all. In fact, I was, when I graduated with a master's in architecture, I was like, where is my nine to five? Like, I'm so ready for a salary. I'm so ready to like buy a whole new wardrobe and get this thing cranking and like have that salary money coming in. But as a military spouse, you know, it just, what it wasn't in the cards. And then, and then what, uh, what branch of service did your husband serve in? He was in the army for 22 years. Okay. So 22 years, U S army. Okay. Who? Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a Marine show. So we're going to give you guys a pad. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm so glad that you welcomed me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking with you. So, so, uh, U S armed service, uh, U S army. 
Now let's talk about, I want to ask you a couple of questions. What was the biggest challenge that you faced as a, a military spouse seeing your, your husband uh, move, move around all over the country? Because you talked about that in your TED Talk, like how, how hard it is for people to get stable. And I want, to, I want you to paint the picture as if a person has never served in the armed forces, like a person on the outside looking in. Well, and that's exactly what happened because, you know, when I first met my husband, we were, he was stationed near Savannah and I was at SCAD. And when I met him, he was like, are, do you, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you want to be part of the military life? And I was like, yeah, whatever the heck that means. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I'm fine. Well, what I did not realize, I had no clue, was that every two to three years, you pack up your entire life on average and you move across the country and you've got basically no say in it. So when you are a part of a military family, these kids that grow up in military families, by the time they're 12, could have lived in three different states, gone to three different schools. It is such, and especially with the, you know, the, the GWAT tempo that we were going through when, when I first met him, mm -hmm, it was mm -hmm. a very challenging lifestyle. Um, you know, I was actually lucky enough to start and stop my degree, the five years that it took me to get my, my degrees. Um, all in the same place. So I was so lucky, but literally I graduated on like a Saturday. I mean, we rolled the U-Haul out that Monday. Like I wow. got just enough time to finish my degree and then we moved to get this. So we're in the beautiful Savannah, Georgia, gorgeous mm -hmm. scenery, architecture is because I got my degree in architecture. And so it's just beautiful place for that, right? Well, we move to Dahlonega, Georgia, which you're from Atlanta, so you know Dahlonega. <laughs> like when I say that, people are like, what? There is nothing in Dahlonega. There's I mean, like there's nine people in Dahlonega. <laughs> oh my God. There's the Ranger Training Battalion and that's about it. You know what I mean? Like people go there to hike the Appalachian Trail, to, to walk to the Northern United States and they go there to go to Ranger School and that was it. So it was like, what am I going to do with my life now? Yep. And, and I think that, and I think that a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions like that transition is easy. And one thing that I feel is that, you know, what, from my experience, you know, it's a very lonely uh, situation, as, as, especially when you are educated, like, mm -hmm. and nothing against people who are not in that, but you have, it's very, very difficult to, um, to be in support of the service member. Can you talk about some of those challenges? And then we, I want to definitely talk about how you were able to sustain such a high level of entrepreneurship and stay fo thoroughly focused on creating your, your business. Yeah. I mean, what I didn't realize because I was so young at the time that we made our first move, you know, I was early twenties. Mm -hmm. So I did not realize how much of your identity was wrapped up in what you did. So I can only imagine a military spouse who's farther along in their career, having to pick up and pack up and move. Um, everything that I was building was sort of swept away. I call it my quarter life crisis because I had all these things that I thought I was going to be, you know, I thought I was going to be an architect. I thought I was going to be a professional. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to have a salary. All of these plans that I had, you know, the military said, well, you know, never mind. You're going to have to, you're going to have to remix this because it's not going to work out the way that you thought. So there was this whole like emotional shift that I had to go through. Um, when everything, you know, it felt at the time, like it was being taken away, like it was being done to me. Um, but I have to had to continue to really remind myself I chose this life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so once you get over that, you're like, OK, well, you know, nobody's coming to save me. So I, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. But I think there's also another emotional toll that nobody really talks about. My husband had all of these incredible people, all these incredible friends, all these really close relationships. He was doing incredible things, jumping out of airplanes. Um, you know, he's got these lifelong um, you know, deployment relationships that he's made, yep. just all of the things that they've gone through. And here I am at home by myself with our kids or our, our son at the time, um, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life, you know, waiting for him to come home. <laughs> and so for somebody who wanted mo more than that, it was very emotionally taxing just to know that like, I didn't have that same network, you know, all mm -hmm. it wasn't built in for me the way that it was kind of built in for him. And that was really hard. And I'm glad that you said that because I'm going to talk about something that's controversial that a lot of people might not like to hear. But I'm going to tell you the the, the heartbeat of the family of that deployed service member is the spouse. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep it real. Like a lot of people and, and the military does a very good job at, at uh, giving accolades to the service member for their contribution. Right. But then also they're not talking about 
when the the spouse has to maintain the home. They're not talking about having to deal with all of the bills. They're not talking about having to deal with all of the predatory lending stuff that goes on, a financial literacy. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about the depression. They don't talk about the person uh, uh, um, you know, coming back from those uh, those deployments and then that person having to reshift their life every single time. They don't talk about the the family member also transitioning from one place to another and then that 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 military spouse being able to you know, um, uh, sorry about that. Being able to, you know, just adjust to that person. And I kind of feel like, you know, if they would do more, a better job at really recognizing and supporting the military spouse, I think that, uh, you know, people would feel more appreciated. What, what do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, listen, when you're off doing something crazy, like at, you're at war, you're deployed, you're doing the things, you know, if, if, if the at home life is not squared away and you always have that in the back of your head, what's going on at home? Is my wife okay? Is my kid or my husband okay? Are my family, like, is my family okay? If you have that looming question and you feel like for some reason they're not, that's, that's got to take a toll. So I completely understand what you mean when you say, you know, the heartbeat of the, of the military is at home. And I think that there is a completely sort of underrated conversation going on about that. You know, I do think that the, it's hard to say, you know, I feel like as a military family, they, there is a lot being done. There are benefits, you know, there are perks that you have and uh, they've tried their best to make it easy. But I do think what I realized is I wasn't about to wait on anybody to come and save me. And I can build a community and I can build relationships where I'm giving that to other people. And it's almost our responsibility as the military community to you know, insulate, not isolate and make sure that we're doing our job to make it, make it a better community, make it a better place. Now I do have another question for you. And now, okay. So, so when did you uh, know that you were not going to go uh, through the architecture uh, scenario and start your business? Did that start uh, as a, um, you know, a, uh, while your husband was on active duty? It did. So when we moved to Dahlonega and they were in ranger school, now I'm not sure, you know, being a Marine, how much ranger school experience you have, but what they do is they go out and they walk and they train these ranger students for like 36 hours at a time. So what I was thinking was going to be an easier sort of tour going from, you know, when he was deployed for 15 months at a time and then 12 months and that, you know, what we were coming on off of these deployments, I thought he was going to this training station. This is going to be an easier tempo every 36 hours, he'd come home and want to sleep. I'm like, what do you think you deserve to take a break after you work for a day and a half? <laughs> <laughs> what about so the stuff that needs this, to get done? <laughs> this crisis moment where I'm like, God, you know, everything that I do, I like, he put his boots down at the door in the wrong place and I'm pissed, you know, like, so I realized I had to do something to fill my time because it's right. not productive. <clears throat> And that's when I realized, okay, I can either go down the street and get a job at Home Depot as a door greeter because look, I did, I took construction technology. I know a thing or two about hardware. Like I could, I could do that or I could do what I really love, which is to build products and build things and try to build a community. That's good. So, so, you know, uh, how did your unique challenges uh, faced by the military spouse influence, you know, your mission and vision for uh, our, uh, you know, your company? It was everything. I mean, what we realized, so I met my business partner pretty early on and we were both going through this like quarter life crisis situation, right? So we, um, we were in the best shape of our lives out there running every day and getting into shape and figuring out what unemployed people were supposed to do with their lives. And, um, you know, a little bit of day drinking, a lot of working out, that kind of thing. And um, we realized there's nobody that deserved income opportunities more than military spouses. We heard something on the radio, like we were listening to a radio advertisement that was talking about income opportunities and grants for people that were providing them. And we were like, there's nobody that deserves that more than an active duty military spouse. What is going on? And then we both kind of looked at each other like, why don't we do it? You know, we're, we're military spouses. Why don't we do it? So we knew we wanted to provide that kind of opportunity before we even knew we wanted to make handbags. Okay. And then, so, so I know that you, you, you went completely opposite from what's, you know, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, uh, how, how do I say this? The regular uh, creators, cause I saw some of your, uh, your products and they're, they're kind of tactical, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about yeah. that style? What, what inspired you to come up with that? Was it, was it on your own or, and can you tell us how you came up with uh, with that style of uh, product? Yeah. 
Well, we knew we wanted it to be inspired by military spouses. So there's this like hardworking, but very refined nature of a military spouse. Like she has got tons of grace, right? Like when you talk about a military spouse, especially a female one, you know, because I, I live in a world where, you know, we talk a lot about women. So my apologies, never to, it's never to, uh, no. to not a male military spouses but you know she's got a ton of grace so she's doing gritty things she's holding on the fort she's taking care of the kids she's doing all of that all while holding her life together and 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 doing good and looking good right so we it was really inspired by that kind of attitude you know we named the company after rosie the riveter who's that gen, like that world war ii icon the mm -hmm. you know yeah. it, um poster and so the whole thing was built on this foundation that we were inspired by hardworking women that just had this get up and go, we can do it attitude. And everything that we built around it was for her. Um, you know, we'd never actually made bags before. We'd not like, we'd never manufactured anything, that's for sure. So we were kind of working a little bit, Googling a lot, working a little bit, <laughs> Googling it again, um, and just, you know, put one foot in front of the other. Uh, it felt like it was going really slow at the time, but you know what they say, the days go slow and the years go fast. Yes. And then, and then, so when you started to plant those seeds, what's it, who was the most inspirational to you? Who's the part, every company has, see, this is a lot of people, every Batman has a Robin, right? Mm -hmm. So who yeah. were the ladies, you know, or who was the most influential um, in your business that led to get as big as you are now? Yeah. Uh, well, we ha I had a partner. <laughs> So we were pretty much like we're the yin and yang, right? So she does spreadsheets, I do watercolor. Like she, she's finance. I'm like people. Um, so we really had the perfect um, built-in toolbox that we needed to tackle any problem. Um, she was going to look at it completely different. She had different skill sets to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. She actually wanted to be an entrepreneur. So she mm -hmm. went to business school. She thought that's what she was going to do. Um, so when we kind of came together, we realized, uh, you know, we've, we've really got all the tools that we need. We might not know what we're doing or how to do it yet, but we've got all the tools that we need. That's awesome. <clears throat> and I wanted to ask you another question, like how was the Ted talk? Uh, can you walk us through how that, I know that I we touched a little bit about it, but like, yeah. how did you get that opportunity and how has it changed your, how did it change your business? Because that's how I found you. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I it was about the people that we had around me. So by the time we had built up a company in Dahlonega, you know, Lisa and I started the business in 2011. She had moved by 2012 onto the next duty station, you know, with her with her husband and her family. So I kept making bags in Dahlonega and, and kind of kept we kept building it. And I'll tell you, right about the time people thought like okay, she's, they're not too crazy. Like they're actually building a company and making bags that make sense and all that. My husband came home from work one day and was like, all right, we're headed to Fort Bragg. And I was like, oh my God. So we packed up the whole company. You know, like I had this whole workshop in my garage. So we packed mm -hmm. up the workshop, the kids, the house, everything. And we uh, pulled it all to North Carolina. And from there, I, we got out of the house. So like step one in the success was we got out of the garage and into a community. We opened doors to a retail store where we could pay for a place to make bags. And we started meeting people and networking and surrounding ourselves with people who understood what we were trying to do and supported that. And from those relationships, we had an incredible community college there in the St. Paul's area. And they were a huge advocate and they were actually the ones that opened the doors to the TEDx. Okay. So, and, and then, so I know you said you were practicing um, in your car and, and, and getting nervous and crying at home before you went on the yeah. show. Right. Yeah. yeah. But tell, what, give me, a, give me a visual of what that studio looks like. Are you talking to people or how does it work? Yeah. So, and that's why it was actually more challenging because in the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is being recorded and it's not in any sort of context. So you have to remember, like I was used to speaking to people and being really in the moment and like engaging with the audience and like talk, like, you know, riffing off of what people would say or faces that they would make. And um, so I was talking to a live audience. We were at the local, there was a local theater in Southern Pines so we, we did the TEDx there. I was along with maybe six other TEDx talks that one day. It was like a, a full day. Okay. 
And yeah, so we were, we were in front of a live audience, which I think is great because I love the feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, but the hardest part about it was not engaging and like digging in, knowing that it was going to have to live forever with no context. Oh, um, like Q and A, yeah. like, like you, yeah. like you want to ask somebody from the crowd or like, how about you? Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at a moment I had made a comment even back to something somebody had said earlier in the day. And I was like, crap, that's not going to make any sense to anybody when they watch my TED talk. <laughs> but, you know, you just got to keep rolling. <laughs> yeah. So what was cool about it is, man, is you hit those stats quick, you know, like boom, boom, boom with the, the, the stats. Um, yeah. and, and that's what drew my attention because, you know, uh, if you don't know, we just partnered with Elena Cardone. I don't know if you know who she is, but she yeah. is right. So she is taking on the, um, you know, she wants to provide more opportunity for military spouses because she saw her, uh, her father was a, a, um, you know, a veteran and she saw the struggles that her mom went through. So she's doing this big whole program. And I'm like, you know what we need to, she needs to know, you know, what it's actually like to sit in that. So that's one of the main reasons why we brought you on here. Not to only just highlight what you've done, but just people, you know, inspire people uh, to see what, you know, how far you can go. You've accomplished so much in, in such a short time. Can you give me a time frame on starting the business uh, to actually hitting that first, you know, aha, people are seeing my product. How many yeah. years did it take for you to, you know, from the seed to get the, the, the actual fruit off of the tree? Yeah. With the way that we scaled our business, it was, it was bootstrapped. So when we, when we first started thinking about a company, we were making prototypes and bags and samples and seeing what we could do. So we were, you know, immediately we got a website immediately. We started trying to grow an e-commerce thing, but quickly realized in order to grow our business, we need to get out there. So we would show up at any farmer's market, any craft show, anything where we could buy an eight foot table and stand behind it with a bag. We did it. Um, so we, we got out there really early, which was great because you get to you just see what your customers are saying. You get to hear the conversations. You get to see the eye, like when their eyes light up, when they're, when I'm talking about a military spouse, they're like, Holy crap, we mm -hmm. do have something. People that understand it, they really get it, they're in. So that was helpful. It was, it was positive reinforcement on the good things. And then we realized what we needed to change pretty early. So, um, but as far as making any traction, I mean, we started the business in November of 2011 with like a bag and a half that we were custom making and pre-ordering. And we did $300,000 in 2013, I think. And then our first million was in 2015. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. So, so I was wondering if you can, uh, if I could borrow a couple of hundred thousand for you from you. You know, I'll get it back tomorrow. I promise. <laughs> Listen, I, we are still trying. To, I will tell you, at every stage of this business, it's like having kids. Like you think it's going to get easier, and the problems just change. You That's know, true. I, I am so far from figuring this out, but man, like it has been a wild roller coaster for sure. Now, and now I want, I want to ask you a couple of questions about, uh, you know, uh, Shark Tank. All right. Yeah. So when you guys, <laughs> yeah. when you guys went in there, how, how did it, standing in front of those people, yeah. how did you feel when you okay. first walked in? This did you one, know you were going to kill it terrified. or what? I was terrified. hundred percent. So like TEDx, I've got this. Shark Tank, I'm like, oh my God. And what's funny about it is, you know, it's pre-recorded. So we go to, we go to California. Mm -hmm. We're there. The entire like three weeks leading up to this, Lisa, my business partner, is like, I don't know what we're doing. We shouldn't be doing this. You know, like this is a bad idea. She's freaking out, panicking, like nervous as all get out. <laughs> and I'm like, we've got this, we've got this. I'm calming her down, telling her it's gonna be fine, you know, all of these things. Day of we are in front of the doors that they open, so you walk on the set. I look over at Lisa and she's like, I feel great. And I'm like, I don't remember my freaking name. Like, how do you feel? <laughs> so we totally flip flopped. Like, I was terrified while we, when we showed up, and like the whole way leading up to it, she was freaking out. So we just like flip flopped. That's funny that you say that because uh, you know I can kind of share a similar situation, man. I had an opportunity yeah. when before I, uh, we got our partnership with with Grant. Um, I was sitting in the. <laughs> I was sitting, it was a Zoom call, right? And mm -hmm. I had all of the stuff I had prepared for. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna kill it. 
And then the day that I was supposed to get on the Zoom, the link disappeared. I couldn't find it. I was like, I was calling people. I'm like, out of all of the time, right? And then like, I'm calling them, they're calling me. And then like, they called me, they shot me a text message and said, you know, unfortunately, you know, that window has uh, passed. We're going to have to reschedule. And I thought it was because of me, but what it really was. So I'm laying on the couch crying, right? (laughs) I'm crying because I thought that I blew my opportunity. But what happened was he was late. It wasn't me. It was him that was late. So I want to encourage people that, you know, getting nervous is part of the process, you know, and then when you go through it, it, it's good. But but I'm going to tell you something, man, like it's so exciting to see um, a military spouse entrepreneur achieve so much at such a short time. I I wanted to um, ask you a couple of more questions. So now you're right before the doors open, you walk in, Mm-hmm. Tell us, walk me through that. Uh, I'm going to, I want to, I want to uh, look at it through your lens. Yeah. So I overstepped my mark. If you watch really closely with the Shark Tank episode, when you, so you're supposed to walk in, you know, with, with all of your, um, you know, power and your, I'm so smart. And then you're supposed <laughs> to stop at a mark on the, on the rug. And I like shoot right over it and I have to step back. So in that moment, I'm thinking, Oh, great. This is off to a great start. The other thing <laughs> they don't tell you or you don't realize is there's no, that music that you're listening to when you watch the show, that doesn't play in, in real life, obviously. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very strange experience having gone from watching hundreds of episodes of Shark Tank where like mm-hmm. you're supposed to be listening to that music and there is no music. That was, that was like, okay, where am I right now? Um, but then you do your pitch, which is, you know, you've memorized it and you're ready to go. And then after that, like you literally, these sharks you have never met, you really don't know who's going to be there. You know how they flip flop around. Mm-hmm. So you have no idea who's going to be there and you really have no idea how it's going to go. They have no idea who you are, none of it. And they just jump right in with the questions. Oh man. So so who had the hardest question for you guys? And I know Mark Cuban was there uh, during that time. Uh, t- tell us how, you know, that those questions and what that led to. Yeah, we, we had a lot of positive feedback. You know, we had a proven, one thing that really helped us is we had the proven track record and we weren't asking for something astronomical. So we weren't going in there asking for a million bucks for 10%. Um, so we had a very reasonable ask and we had a proven track record of business. So we had already done 300,000, you know, we were actively making and selling bags. Um, so I think it set us up with the right tone. Um, and then, you know, the questions all come at one time. So Lisa's answering some, I'm answering some, it was very chaotic. Uh, and I really can't watch the show anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know what you. I know how you feel. You're like, man. I should have said that. You know, (laughs) like I know how it feels, man. It's like, did I? I, I, We could have done more. But like, I mean, obviously that you know, even having that opportunity was great. What, what, what came from that show? What did you? How did that show? How was that show instrumental for your business? It was huge growth. Like. We have the stretch marks to prove it. Huge growth, um, thousand percent over a, a thousand percent business growth over the next week um, wow. than than we had ever done. It was insane, you know. And it gives you a it gives you a, a level of um, you know when you say I, I, I've been on Shark Tank, it gives you kind of that instant credibility. So people know like I'm we're not just you know making handbags and selling one or two on on Etsy at this point, like people are going to show up and take you a little bit more serious, which is fantastic. Plus the revenue growth was, um, insane. And, you know, we really learned how to manufacture after that. Uh, Right. So, so one thing that I feel like that's kind of, here's one thing that I definitely can say. Okay. So we have a lot of military spouse partners in our seven companies that we, uh, we have. And Mm -hmm. one thing that I could say is that they are resolute if they get the opportunity. I kind of feel like they're eagles in a cage. Yeah. If they have the opportunity that they knew that how hard and how how loyal and how how resolute, you know, a military spouse is, more people would seek out, um, you know, employing people who have uh, served in that capacity. Uh, what would you say in complimentary to that? 
If you knew what a military spouse had to deal with on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know if she can, he or she can thrive in that environment. They're, um, you know, if they're if they're surviving the military life, then mm -hmm. they're going to be an incredible leader in your business. They're going to be a great employee. They're going to be able to hold hold on, you know, through pressure. They're going to understand priorities. Um, you you just can't. There's no way to really test that, but I feel like the military life does a really good job. Comes a really close second to give it, a, you know, to give it the the ultimate pressure test. That that's fantastic. Now I do have a question. So so let me go ahead and do a, a quick room reset, ladies and gentlemen. You are in the uh, winning real estate uh, house on Clubhouse, and then all of the social media platforms, guys. Uh, TonyGlennII.com is where you guys could find us. Uh, we have a very special guest. Okay, entrepreneur. Uh, uh, Ted uh, talk uh, uh, guest, uh, um, military spouse, the educated, like so much. Uh, um, she's on a show right now. And if you guys have questions, you guys could come up and raise your hand and ask any questions uh, while we have her here. Uh, and mm -hmm. then um, I do want to ask you a question. How can we find your bags? What website can we find your your bags at? Because I'm going to I'm going to have my staff put it in the chat as we're speaking. Wonderful. It's rriveter.com. So that's rriveter, like Rosie the Riveter.com. rriveter.com. Now your bags are made out of uh, deployment um, um, material, right? Can you talk about uh, the fabric and how you manufacture uh, your product? Right. So w early on, we made everything out of recycled military materials. So we started taking old tents and dop kits and uniforms, anything that we could get our hands on, and we would turn it into a bag. So canvas and leather, um, just really nice, you know, refined pieces, whereas the market was full of, you know, the diaper bags with the name tapes on them and all that kind of stuff. And we wanted to do something a little bit more of an elevated version. Mm -hmm. So we started with that. And then right when Shark Tank hit, we realized we had to make a choice. So is everything going to be made out of recycled military materials or do we keep helping as many military spouses with mobile income as we possibly can? And we ultimately chose we're going to help military spouses and we're going to scale that as big as we can. So we went and we started making bags out of new materials, rolled goods. So if you go to our website today, you'll see anywhere from nylon to canvas some special edition bags, some prints, that kind of thing. And we, we had to make, to make a strategic shift in our business where we have these really cool one of a kind items, or we can fulfill the mission of providing mobile flexible income on the biggest scale that we can. And so we chose the latter. And, and I do have another question. Um, uh, what is the future of what, what are you working on right now? Cause I know you got something cooking. You don't seem yeah. like the type of person right. that will just sit back and just you know, uh, uh, bask in your royal uh, 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 success. Like, what's the what is what are you working on right now um, that uh, people can that's coming out uh, to social media near you? Yeah. So the most boring answer is we're doing more of the same. So we're really we're not done yet. You know, every military family doesn't know who we are. Every military spouse doesn't have access to mobile income yet. So ultimately, we are not done with the mission at hand. But we're doing it in fun ways like maybe some apparel or you know, oh, bringing okay. jewelry and candles and other merchandise to the table where, you know, if you buy an R Riveter bag, that's great. Maybe you only need a couple bags a year. But, you know, we want to be the place for people to go to give the best gifts, you know, a retirement gift or a military spouse gift or something like that. So, you know, we want to be the ultimate the ultimate stop destination for the military spouse gift giver. That's fantastic. Now, I do have another question for you. So what, how many people does it take to run a business making seven figures? Like, what does that look like? Like what, how many, how much staff do you need? Right. And I have a couple of questions I'm going to read off to you. That's in it. And by the way, we have 872 people on all social media platforms right now. Nice. So I'm just letting you know, people know, are going to know who you are and this is going to live forever. Uh, well, I and I, well, I, I, I definitely wanted to get, you know, get this information out because I think that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that are seeking the opportunity to be where you're at. And I think mm -hmm. that if they, if they see what it looks like, you know, and being successful that for this amount of time, then it's going to be easy for them to echo that. Mm -hmm. Well, I would 
say that it it actually doesn't take as many people as you thought to run a seven figure business. You know, I think you've got you need to have the core functions covered, right? You need to have somebody who is well versed in finance, somebody who's product or people oriented, um, somebody who's sales, you know, and then um, the actual team mm -hmm. and, and th some version of that, you know, across any industry. What's interesting about our business is we manufacture goods. So we have a lot more people on our staff just because we are literally making goods, not just buying and selling them. So if you were a straight e-commerce, you know, buying and selling business, you could do a seven figure business with three and a half people. Um, once you got your systems down, you know, and you are, you're in, you have the right partners, you could be as lean and as mean as you wanted to be with all the tools that you have access to today. So I never want that to um, discourage anybody our team right now because we are manufacturing goods and we have a brick and mortar retail store we have more like 30 people you know where we have we have great margins on our bags and, and it supports the business uh, the way that it um, has grown and evolved to this day you know but it, it really is dependent on your industry and what you're trying to get done that's fantastic and then so so what advice would you give your uh, a, a military spouse, their first year being a military spouse. What if I, if you could go back in time and say, hey, uh, this is what you should be doing, or this is the direction that you should be going in, just from a personal perspective. And then we're going to ask, what advice would you give an entrepreneur military spouse? Yeah. yeah. Um, both of them, personal or, or in business, you got to know who you are and what you want. I think I took a little bit too long to come to the identity, you know, the, the who I really am, no matter what role or mission or community I'm showing up in. Um, take the time to dig down and understand yourself, what motivates you, what you want, you know, that if you have the answers to those questions, you can do anything. But what will happen is if you don't know who you are and if you're not, you don't have a strong sense of self or a strong sense of identity, um, you know, problems feel bigger problem, you know, whether they're military spouse problems where you're feeling alone or your, your spouse is deployed and everything is falling down around you. You know, God knows the dishwasher is going to break your light bulb is not going to get paid and something else is going to happen all at the same time. So when those things happen, if you are the strongest version of yourself, you can get through anything. Um, so take the time to do the work on you before before anybody else because that will that will serve you in many different capacities whether you're you know building and growing a family or building and growing a business or doing both okay and then and then that that's good and we're going to take some questions from from the audience okay so i have yvonne yvonne is checking in from south carolina she says did you have any problems with starting your business what was the hardest part did you ever have a chance was there ever an opportunity for you to fail? Oh my God, so, every day. It sounds like uh, what she's asking is like, what was there a break point in your business that you you had? And then I have Angel that's going to come and ask a question, I think. Angel, yeah. you want to ask a question too as well, right? Okay, Angel's next. Sure. Yeah, okay. I think the hardest part early on was it felt like the chicken and the egg. We have no money, but we need money. But we need money to make money. Like in the early startup phase and even through like the one to two and a half million dollars, depending on the business and how much cash it's slinging off, it always felt like we need money, but we don't have it. But we've got to get it to make it. You know, mm -hmm. So there was this constant chicken and egg thing happening with cash. Um, because we were bootstrapping our business because we were funding it, you know, we put $2,000 each on a credit card and I can tell you it wasn't all at the same time. And that's how we went from zero to $300,000. But what that forced us to do was live in that, live in that uncertainty and that hurt. And we really came up with good solutions that mattered. Um, and if we had had $500,000 or a hundred thousand dollars to start our business, we probably would have like throwing it all away on accident, not even really knowing what we needed. So the the hurt and the failing really fueled good foundational growth for us. So even though it was hard and, and, you know, I always thought like when I talked about wanting a job and like a, like a fancy, fancy wardrobe and the nine to five salary, you know, I never saw myself sitting in my garage making handbags and like pounding on leather goods when I was, 27 years old, um, basically like working, working in the garage to make bags. 
so there was moments where I was like, what am I doing? But then I pushed through that and get to the other side of it where you can build a team and have what you need. And um, I'm glad I did. Okay. And then we're going to go and, and we're going to go to another question. This is coming from uh, YouTube. It was there ever an opportunity for you to quit? Did you ever want to quit? Um, at, there's been seasons of the business where it's felt really hard. I mean, I'll tell you even last year, last year was, a, a for, for me, it was a very challenging year. It did mm. fuel another round of, okay, I've got to work on myself yeah. personally again. Um, why, why are we doing this? My husband retired two years ago. Mm -hmm. So that kicked off a new season of life for us where I'm having to refine who I am in my new space, in my new town. Um, you know, there's, I'm not a, I'm not an active duty military spouse anymore. I've got no built in community around me where everybody knows what I just went through. You know, mm -hmm. we moved back to his hometown and nobody knows who the heck I am, why I exist or why I'm here, you know? So, um, there's a whole rebuilding that happened and that felt really low. Um, now I'm kind of by myself. I used to have a whole staff. I used to have a retail store. It's what we still have it in North Carolina, but it's not around me. So I'm working on building that back up so I can see it and be a part of it again. Cause that was a big part of what I felt like success was for me is having that community. So it sounds like to me that you have to lose something in order to win something, right? Yes. So that's the exact same thing that we had to go through as well. I can definitely um, relate to you because when I was on active duty, we had, you know, we built our business around military. So when mm -hmm. getting out of that, especially you, you also got to deal with your husband going through his thing, right? Yes. When you do something at a very high capacity for a long time, the army is like, Hey buddy, thank you. You get your awards and Hey, uh, you're not going to get any phone calls. Yeah. What was that like? And then we're going to go to Angel and Ellis for questions next. Um, can you answer that question? And then we're going to go to Angel for a question. My husband's always been a very strong leader of our family. So I've never, I've never had him ask me like, what should I do next? You know what I mean? Like we've talked about the next duty station or the next role in the military or whatever, but he spent a good eight months working through what would be the best next phase for our family. And he would ask me what I thought. And I'm like, what do you want my, you really want my, <laughs> are you sure? Like, do, are you, are you sure? Um, you know, cause it was his decision to retire. Like I knew when he was ready, he would do that. You know, we'd be there to support him. Like, I've always been the best, most supportive partner that I can be. And he's always been a, a great leader of our family. So when he went through that transition, it, we were trying to have these conversations and he would get so frustrated because I'm like, you do whatever you want to do and I'll support you. And he was like, I want your input. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not used to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these are, these are definitely different and challenging conversations um, that we are thankfully on the other side of now. He's got a great, he's got a great uh, new career, but um, yeah, it was, it was, different it was a different kind of hard and it was for me the hardest part was moving someplace where nobody knew who i was or what we had been through you know when you say you're a military family and it, when you're around other military families they get it but you know when you're not it's a it's a it's a whole other there's a gap there and it can be hard that's a fact and and um i see angel angel uh welcome to the show uh do you have a question uh for miss cruz mrs cruz sorry I do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm a mom of a young man who is on his journey into the military. And my question to you is if you were to give, not, uh, not feedback, but if you were to give a blueprint um, notion on some of the experiences that you've had in your, your life as a military wife, what would you give to the youth today? Ooh, um, it's a good question. Yeah, it I, to trust myself a little bit earlier. So you know, when you're young and you're you're either venturing into a new career or you're first married, um, or you're you know first building you know a company, uh, you're still finding your feet. And I feel like there was a I always felt like maybe there were other people that knew more than me that knew better than me that knew even you know more senior spouses or you know there's there's always somebody in, in the position that you're in that feels like they know more they've been there they've done that they're they're at another level and i wish i would have trusted myself more earlier 
There is nobody that cares about what you're doing more than you do, whether it's raising your family or supporting your, your son or supporting your husband or building a business um, more than you do. And, and I wish I would have, um, I would have been more confident in myself and trusted my decisions and my judgment calls earlier than I did. Wow. That's so, yeah. That's fantastic, man. And I'm going to tell you why. Listen, guys, if I could say anything, man, if you have an idea, stop walking around with the seed in your pocket, put it in the mm -hmm. ground. And do you, no matter what, you would rather live with, with failing at it versus living with regret. So I would, so essentially what you're saying is go for it, plant yes. the seed, right? Yes. Go for it and then trust yourself. And then, you know, now I'm in this space where we, we do seven figures and we make thousands of bags and sell thousands of bags. There's always an expert somewhere that I feel like might know more than me. Well, it turns out they don't, they just know how they did it or they saw somebody else that did it. And I just, now that I'm, that I'm where I am and I, maybe it's because we're 10 years, you know, over 10 years and you just get to that point, but I'm realizing, you know, I'm going to seek out the experts and have them, and, and make sure that I'm connecting with the right people, but I've got to trust myself in every decision that I make. That's that's really, really good. I see um, Alexis, Ellis, and uh, uh, Christy. Uh, Chrisley, uh, Ellis, did you want to ask uh, um, a question? Brother Ellis? Oh, I can read your question that you put in the chat if you're not available. Okay, so Ellis said, I'm a Navy kid and my parents were in the garment business. You have a huge product line. What challenges does the does that present for your company? Yeah, <laughs> um, I love that you that you realized that and that you called that out. So cash flow, um, something that we had to learn early on is the difference and the balance that cash flow and profitability make when it comes to having a a physical product that you're selling. So we would go and we would drive into how do we get this cost down the most that we could possibly can so we could be the most profitable we can. Well, when you buy 10,000 yards instead of 1,000 yards and all of your money goes out the door. So we realized early on, there's a very fine balance between cash flow and profitability, especially as we're bootstrapping and funding the business off our own cash flow. So that was a dance that we had to learn really early. Uh, that's very challenging and it takes everybody on your team to be on the same page in order to do so. That's good. And uh, uh, Brother Chris Lee, are you there? Did you have a question for uh, Camp Miss Cameron? That's correct. Uh, I would like to know, like, what resources did you utilize the most from the military that helped you the most? I'm gonna use. I'm gonna have an unpopular opinion, but we did not use any resources from. The Come military. on, man. See, hey, look, listen. I okay. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm so glad. Thank you. Ah, thank you for keeping it real because people are afraid to ask that question. And that mm -hmm. is where I feel where the government can do better. Mm -hmm. What programs are available for military spouses to become entrepreneurs? That is the part that I feel that they need to work on. Like, why not? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good question, brother. It's, it's like it's too it's almost too broad it'd be so hard you know they've done a great job working on the light there's a lot of work to still be done right but like there's been a ton of work done on the licensing and the transferability of that and you know i know that there's certi they they'll pay for your you know certificates and things like there's money there there's grants there for very specific things but because entrepreneurship is so broad and there's so many ways you can get into it man it i don't even know how you would I don't even know how you begin, but there's great private sector communities that that help fill that gap as well. And this is what uh, and, I can ask a question. Yes, I got you next, Angel. And this is what we're doing. Okay, so we are doing 10x military spouses, and this is what this is going to be be doing: uh, finding people um, like yourself and mm -hmm. having an opportunity for maybe even just giving somebody a little nugget like okay write your business plan okay this is how you this is the banking this is what you need to do set up your limited liability company this is what type of insurance that i had to go through this is the product line that i had to go through this is what average because there's a lot of things that go behind becoming uh an entrepreneur that a lot of people don't understand and i feel like once we build this community this is exactly what we're doing. Number one, personal and professional development for military spouses, giving mm -hmm. them a voice, a network where people are facing the same thing. 
where is their community um, like the military for military spouses to come in and share uh, ideas with like-minded people that are looking to advance in entrepreneurship. That's mm-hmm. the second thing that we're doing is, you know, um, the uh, 10X military spouse uh, um, uh, wealth formula where we teach, where we're going to be sharing free information on, hey, these are the grants that are available to you. Did you guys know that they even exist? I love it. This is this is phenomenal. Sign me up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what, what you need. You sign me up for whatever whatever I can put my hat in the ring for. Indeed. And then, um, Angel, I know you had a question. Uh, Angel, did you want to ask her another question? Go ahead. Yeah. No. That I'm. I kind of really appreciate the question that was just asked. Um, it, it was kind of a take on where I was with my question. And mm-hmm. so I'm really glad that it was asked. And so um, just touching back on the youth um, after this question has been asked, can can I learn from you ways that you think that we can bring awareness to to the youth who are entering into the military to get to where, you know, Anthony has just um, kind of professionally explained where his his endeavors are? I, I mean, I just I think it's about showing them the way. So you Mm -hmm. have the mentors, you have the conversations that you're going to be having. Um, You know, when I was a kid, I was lucky enough, my dad owned his own business. My, uh, my aunt had her own construction business. So I saw people that were doing the things and making their own life and building their own life. Um, And I just feel like having that community and making yourself available to it and for it and having those conversations is, is really important. And, and Angel, this is what I would definitely say to you because you said that your 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 uh, son is going into the military, correct? That's correct. Oh, uh, the first thing that I would tell him is don't join the damn Marines. <laughs> don't do you know, it. <laughs> we had this, I remember the one day I had brought him in the room to ask you a question, and you know something? He has actually made the decision not to go into the Marines. He's he's now picked the hat of the Army. Okay. And. It's um. It looks a little different, you know, for uh, me. Um, Angel, you kind of. I kinda... think that he has. Uh, I see. I have the red bar. All right. Let me. Let me. Okay. So no, I'm joking. If you uh, whatever branch of service, this is the advice that I would give you, and I think that um, I think uh, Mrs. Cruz will be in complimentary to this. Uh, number one is. If he's going to join the military, the first thing that he should do is go to the education office and maximize the uh, basic allowance for uh, the not the basic allowance for housing, but the education benefit. So he leaves with if he decides to get out, then he has uh, either a trade or an education. Mm-hmm. The second thing that I would do is that, you know, if he's going to get married to someone, make sure that uh, she thoroughly understands um, the uh, the depth of being a military spouse, because you know, that person has to have the bandwidth to be able to deal with that because it's not easy. It's not going to be easy, you know, so Wait. make sure. Yeah, Wait for a long time. It's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, and then also, you know, you want someone like, you know, someone, you know, that is going to be, uh, you know, help keep the glue because I, I personally feel like that, you know, the on the game of in the game of chess the military spouse is the queen she has the most the most she's the most powerful piece on the chessboard she will she can either make or break that service member's military career because the last thing he needs to know uh to worry about is his family right Mm -hmm. so that person is way more important than the veteran it's easy for him to go and be uh be do what he does because he all he has to do is follow orders and be in shape and he's going to get promoted. However, I kind of feel like the military spouse is the glue that keeps the family together, especially when there's family involved, because that person has to be a really good teammate. Would you, would you agree with that? 100%. The other thing that's challenging, the, the military culture pushes to marriage pretty soon because all the benefits and the access go to the spouse, right? So you've got to be married to get on base, to do not not you have to be married to get all of the access to the things that make that life easier. So if you're, if you're just dating, it's hard, it's hard for that person. It's hard for 
um, he or her to, to fully integrate. And I remember that challenge when I was dating my husband at the beginning, thinking, oh my God, like, I, you know, we're not ready to get married. I know I want to marry him. You know, you get that feeling like, I know I want to marry him, but we're, we're going to go through this process just to make sure that everything um, works out the way that we want it to. But I remember thinking, man, the military really wants you. It feels like it wants you to get married. It feels like you have to do that um, to be successful, you know, to, to have the, the healthcare and, and to be a part of the community. And that's the kind of thing too, where I feel like that delayed, um, the delayed choice for us to get married was very helpful in us finding our feet, both, you know, as a, as a couple and making sure that we were individually both ready to, to commit, um, that I was ready for the military life as my husband had asked me before, you know, when we first met, because it is very, very unique. It's very different. So we, we, you know, I dated him through a 15 month deployment. It was hard. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. It was, it was the time where, you know, basically he left three months in, they had announced all boots on the ground is going to be extended. So we, it was like, we were starting our 12 month deployment all over again. It was, it was a really hard, hard time frame. And then I have a, I know you got to go here soon. And I, what, uh, first and foremost, I appreciate you guys, uh, uh, you guys for coming on the show and listening to the interview. Uh, Cameron Cruz, military spouse, TEDx uh, 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 talk, entrepreneur, superhero. Okay. <laughs> um, I have uh, Ellis on stage right now. Ellis, uh, welcome to the show. What question would you like to ask uh, Mrs. Cruz? Well, well, thank you so much for bringing me up. And, and Mrs. Cruz, I have so much admiration and respect for you. Uh, I grew up in a, uh, a military family, and they also had uh, a business in the in the garment industry. And I remember crying when I was like eight years old because we had machines in our house that they would run all night and I couldn't sleep. So <laughs> I have so much admiration for what you achieved. I mean, hats off to you. Um, you. Uh, it's been uh, such an incredible uh story that you've told and you know sorry i've been jumping in and out but i just wanted to you know number one say how much respect i have for you but also do you have a vision for like an exit plan or um mm, you question. know what does it look like for for you uh, you know like a five year or ten year is there an exit plan that you have uh, uh yeah. in mind or a vision that you have in mind for your company you know what's funny is the exit plan i never really thought of it until it got hard last year <laughs> <laughs> so I think when we first started, there was no, there was no master business plan. There was no, you know, I'll grow it to 10 and 10 million or hundred million. There was no conversation about that. It was literally, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to provide. It was very community driven. It was very mission oriented. We want to make money. Don't get me wrong. Like we are, we're a for-profit business and we want that to be a healthy business. But early on, it was very much driven by people and mission and community so that got us through that initial phase you know and lisa and i now that we've been doing this for 13 years we are starting to think about what does the future look like um we are learning more and more about that so i spent the last 13 years trying to figure out how to make stuff how to lead people how to grow a business like there's so much packed into that i never had a real job before our riveter so it was like the ultimate on the job learning and now that I'm getting to the point where we have a team, we have people in place, um, we have space to think about that. You know, my kids are 10 and 13. So I'm also trying to time it. Like, is it before they get into high school? Is it after they get into high school? So long story short, I don't have a baked out plan. Um, I just know that this is the, you know, this is the retirement fund. So we'll, we'll see uh, how it goes. And I'm glad that you asked that question, Ellis, because this is what we're going to do for you. I have a question for you. This is going to be now. It's going to be a a, a cool one because we like to give in the uh, in the space, and we're, we're honored to have you on the show. Here's the question: Do you have your children um, employed in your company? No, not yet. But my husband, um, we need to get. He was doing consulting, so last year's taxes we're an eye opener for us mm -hmm. and we um are now considering that very move i will tell you that so this is what i'm going to talk to you about we i'm i'm going to uh what i'm going to my gift to you for coming onto the show and supporting us is that i'm going to after i get off of this phone call i'm going to give you a free ticket to our next uh uh 10x military spouse veteran well formula and we're going to show you how you can pay both of those kids 13,000 
$800 tax free for marketing in your business. So we appreciate you coming on the show today. Does anybody else have any questions? We got time for two more questions. Credit Ninja, Dr. Clarissa J. Do you guys have any questions for her before we, we close out the show? All right. Outstanding. Are, are there any now? What's the best I'm, way? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Jump in. No, I was going to say you stole my question because I was going to ask if her kids worked um, in her business. But I just wanted to say it was really it was inspiring to hear um, all that you said. And I you know, I my dad lived in Savannah and uh, we my mom lived near Lake Lanier. So th I can relate and on a geographically to your story. And I just wanted to say thank you for coming and sharing oh, that. You. I appreciate it. It's very sweet of you. Outstanding guys. Well, so I, I want to close out with this. Now, what is the best way to, uh, again, I want to make sure you guys have where you can find the product. Uh, what is the best website to, uh, to find the product again, um, to close out the show for our new listeners, we're going to put that in the chat and pin it. So you guys could, uh, make sure that you find the product and then also make sure you find. we want to know how we can find you on social media. What's the best way to contact mm -hmm. you on social media, follow your movement. So you can shop and buy at rriveter.com and you can follow us on social at our riveter bags. So that's on Facebook and on Instagram at our riveter bags. Fantastic, guys. Well, you guys have been uh, privy to the Winning Real Estate Show, also the Sit Rep Podcast, where we help you win at life. And today's special guest, Cameron Cruz, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you, and we look forward to seeing you in our in our next uh, event. And then I am a proud supporter. What I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to donate uh, a, one of her product to someone who knows a military spouse so we can bring awareness uh, to your product. Okay. So uh, hey, you'll see military spouse appreciation day is coming up on May 10th. So it's great timing. That's perfect. See, see how God aligns us. Ah! Okay. <laughs> so really appreciate you coming on to the show guys. Again, Tony Glenn, I, I, if you, uh, if you go there and you want to see this, this is going to, as soon as we hit end, and then we're also going to send you some reels of the interview. So you'll have it for your social media to post it as well. Uh, you'll thank get you. some content from us. We really appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you for coming to the show, guys. Make sure you hit uh, like and subscribe. Give her a lot of love. Make sure you go look at the TED Talk because it was awesome. And maybe one day I'll be on there. You never know. I might have to get on the phone call with you, man. <laughs> hey, all you got to do is speak it into the world. Ask and you shall receive, right? Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much. And uh, thank, thanks, guys, for the support on the show. Have a great day. Thank you.